Okay, uh, this could be interesting today. Um, I'm still getting used to this new setup. Uh, I've got all the stuff that I'm going to show you in this video I've got sitting in my lap. So, because I don't have a proper stand or table or anything set up next next to me. Uh, so, yeah, but hopefully this video will be sufficient, sufficiently entertaining. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll have some bloopers to show you at the end of me dropping stuff. I hope not. But anyway, uh, here goes nothing. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, kind of a special video for you guys today. Uh, everybody else is doing it, so why don't I? Uh, to uh, paraphrase uh, Cranberry's album title. Uh, everybody else is doing mid-year album uh, countdowns, uh, so I thought I would do that for the first time ever. Uh, this is basically substituting for the quarterly Spank and Platters uh, album review kind of videos that I used to do, but uh, stopped doing uh, with the onset of 2022. Uh, just because I don't think I'm really, really great at the uh, album review thing, and it take it takes a lot of energy out of me, and uh, you know, so I could give you a couple other reasons, but uh, suffice to say, this uh, mid-year countdown is substituting for those. So I'll talk a little bit about these albums, my favorite, my ten favorite albums of the year so far, uh, and yeah, I can't. Can you believe it's halfway through 2022 already? That's just nuts, and. Uh, Yes, I, I would have had this video to you a couple weeks earlier. I, I kind of wanted to give it to you right at the beginning of July, but, you know, stuff stuff happens, you know. So, yes, um, my year-end list is usually 20 to 25 albums, uh, so I thought I would ma make a, an abbreviated list, 10 albums, for the my mid-year countdown, a plus one honorable mention. Uh, but, yes, it has been a pretty good year for music so far, I would I have to say. Um, up until now, I've actually picked up 27 new re newly released albums uh, between January and now. Uh, far more CDs than LPs, as, the, as was the case last year, but a few more LPs than last year. Uh, but that uh, trend, I think, is uh, reversing itself because album uh, new vinyl album t uh, prices have just gotten outrageous. Uh, yes, I, I've, I've bought two albums from the, in the past three months, two of the albums that I bought, were uh, more than $40. And I think that's a little bit ridiculous, don't you? And when they're single disc LP titles, I mean, if it were a double album, yeah, I would understand. But one LP, 40 plus bucks? No. Come on, record industry. You can do better than that. Uh, but anyway, uh, yes, this list, as I said, covers albums up through June 30th. But I have already picked up uh, four albums just this month, in July, at least one of which will definitely be within probably the top ten of my year-end list. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where these albums on this list rank uh, come December. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First off, my honorable mention, and the only reason this is an honorable mention, really, is because it just came out a couple weeks before the end of June, uh, I believe it did. Anyway, that's when I got my hands on it. So I've only had a couple weeks before the uh, the cutoff date for this list to really absorb the album, and that is Conan Gray's sophomore album, Super Ache. This is really, really good. Um, more upbeat than his first album, uh, although the lyrics are probably no less autobiographical than his first album. Uh, excellent uh, synth pop, uh, bedroom pop sort of stuff. And, well... One thing I gotta say with this album, despite the price point, check out the record itself. A translucent ruby red vinyl. Gorgeous record. Uh, one of the most beautiful, uh, visually beautiful records I have uh, had uh, in recent memory. So, yes, excellent stuff. Uh, People Watching and Astronomy and Jigsaw are three of my favorite tracks on this album. I would not be surprised if this lands in my top 10, maybe top 10, definitely top 15 of my year-end list uh, when the time comes. So yes, Conan Gray, Super Ache, his sophomore album, go check it out, definitely. And now into my list proper, number 10, which actually is another vinyl LP. This one was brought to my attention by uh, Keegan over at K-Man Reviews. Uh, I had seen it on the racks, but uh, I've been kind of hit and miss in liking this artist, uh, so I didn't check it out at the time, but uh, Keegan left pretty much a, a glowing review of it in one of his recent uh, review review recalls, 
that's what he calls those. Uh, so yes, I decided I had to check it out, and it was very much worth my time. And I'm sorry I, met, I slept on it until uh, recently. I think uh, beginning of June was when I picked it up. It is A Beautiful Time, Willie Nelson's 72nd album. Boggles the mind, doesn't it? Uh, but yes, fantastic stuff. I mean, it's what you would come to expect from Willie Nelson. Great, great country songs, great storytelling songs. He is, I mean, he is pretty much the the living, the living reigning god of country music. I guess in, in a manner of speaking. So, yes, uh, fantastic stuff. Let me see here. The uh, "Live Every Day" and "Energy Follows Thought" are two of the standout tracks, as well as the title track. Just awesome stuff here. Uh, Fourteen songs, and uh, yes, yeah, so he doesn't uh, he doesn't skimp on the number of songs on this album. And I think I realized what it is about Willie Nelson that why I like some of his albums and why I don't care much for others. He does better, in my opinion. He sounds better and basically does better on originally written country material than he does on the Great American Songbook covers albums. Uh, like uh, I bought. Um, Summertime, which was released what four or five years ago, it was a Gershwin tribute album, and I thought it was just it was just okay. So, uh, but I mean, on this one, he's just outstanding. Uh, his voice is a little weathered, of course. Uh, you know, being what is he in his uh, late eighties by now, I think. But I mean, honestly, he still said he still has more than enough of his voice to be entertaining and heart wrenching and uh, funny and. Just a generally all around a fantastic country album. Uh, who would have thought, you know, five, ten years ago, who would have thought a Willie Nelson album would be, would be in my year end list? But here we go. So, yes, number 10, A Beautiful Time by Willie Nelson. Amazing album. Now, number nine is the third album by Years and Years. It's called Night Call. And this one, I believe, was the first new release that I bought uh, in 2022. In fact, I. <laughs> It was so early in the year that uh, about four months ago, when I was, you know, getting starting to gear up for a uh, mid-year list, I listened to it and I had to stop for a second and think: Was it released in this year or was it released last year? So that, that's how it was released. Like in, I think it was January was when this was released. So and it had also been that long since I had listened to it, and uh, I just had to let it. Uh, for some reason, I had to let it rest for two or three months before I checked it out again and. Uh, very, very good stuff. I mean, uh, Ollie Alexander, who is who basically is years and years, used to be a duo or uh, a trio, but it's just Ollie now. Um, excellent synth pop stuff, uh, just almost dripping with 80s sounds. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Uh, the song Star Trek, Star Trek, Star Struck, excuse me, uh, Strange and Unusual, as well as Consequences and Intimacy are probably my four favorite songs. Not necessarily in that order, but uh, yeah, if you love synth pop kind of stuff, uh, and an equal mixture pretty much of ballads and more upbeat songs, you got to check out Years and Years if you have not yet. Uh, don't sleep on this band. They are just wonderful. Now, number eight on my list is probably the one, well, not counting uh, the honorable mention Conan Gray just because of when it was released. Number eight is probably the one that I most recently put onto my list. Uh, it actually replaces... Another album which I have, honestly can't remember, I think it was Red Hot Chili Peppers. I like Red Hot Chili Peppers, it's just not enough to, spoiler alert, not enough to make this list. But yes, this one I picked it up, and actually, funny thing, it was pretty much an impulse buy at Barnes & Noble one day. I just I saw it there and I thought, hey, I like Brian Ad Adams, but I haven't listened to any of his recent stuff lately, so I went ahead and bought it. And uh, yeah, I listened to it, and it was only okay for a while, uh, for the first couple of listens. So I put it aside. I, I just let it sit for, oh, two months, two or three months, and came back to it. And I turns out I just, I love it. It grew on me so much during that uh, sometimes it's a good thing to just let an album rest, uh, that you're not crazy about it first. And before you know it, it'll be number eight on your list. Yes, Brian Adams with his album, So Happy It Hurts. Uh, yes, the veteran Canadian rock and roll singer-songwriter uh, he is this. Brian Adams is in classic form on this album. Uh, some of the songs are a little underwhelming, uh, like uh, "On the Road" and "Kick Ass." Although, um, who was I think it was John Cleese does the spoken word intro on "Kick Ass," so that's I mean that that kind of elevates it. That almost saves the song, I have to say, even though it is a song about rock and roll. 
Uh, and you know, I love songs about music. But uh, yes, um, maybe just maybe just one or two songs that are um, you know on the plus side more than are on the minus side is what keeps this one from climbing any higher. But still, I, I really really enjoy it. Uh, there's the song I've Been Looking For You, which kind of, it stands out in the fact that it's a bit more of a rockabilly kind of a sound, a, kind of an early rock and roll sound. Really, really uh, enjoy that one. Uh, the song Never Gonna Rain is, has kind of has a soul vibe, which makes it really, really enjoyable, as well as the title track. Um, if you're looking for something that's uh, upbeat, optimistic, and that was basically the frame of mind that Brian Adams wrote this album in, was, uh, you know, where we were starting to come out of quarantine, so he was kind of that was the objective of the of the album album for him was to you know announce that you know the, the world is coming back and to you know we can embrace the stuff that we've we had to put on hold because of quarantine uh, and he does more often than not on this album he does a pretty darn good job of lifting my spirits and yes i've got to say it was uh, a an impulse buy that ended up being worth the money uh, great great album uh, if, if you especially if you like Brian Adams, and if you love his early stuff, and like me, you hadn't listened to his recent stuff in a while, you won't be disappointed with this one. Fantastic stuff. Now, number seven on my list is, uh, I'm kind of surprised, and I'll maybe a little bit disappointed that uh, it's so far down on this list. It's not even in the top half of the list, because this guy is one of my favorite artists of all time. Uh, his voice, as I've mentioned on my channel before, his voice is kind of like a comfy old sweater, uh, I've been enjoying his voice since I was a teenager, literally. And I'm talking about Colin Hay. Uh, he was the front man for Men at Work, the rock band back in the 80s. And he, but he's been recording solo albums pretty steadily ever since then. It's just that the last two or three albums, I've noticed that, at least to me, the, the memorability of his songs and the, uni the uniqueness of what they have to say, I guess, is the best way I know how to put it has very, very slowly, but very, very steadily, been going downhill a little bit. So that's why he is not as high as he otherwise would be in my countdown. But still, uh, as I said, his voice is just beautiful. If you like, you know, kind of uh, uh, weathered voices that are a little bit older, and, and unique voices, you'll like Colin Hay. Uh, the song Love is Everywhere is great, and it has kind of a... Uh, just a, it, it well the, the name of the song basically is it's an optimistic uh, kind of a you know love is everywhere is the message of the song basically uh, yes that that's profound isn't it uh, anyway um, a couple of other standout tracks are starfish and unicorns as well as sea of always and Agatha Bell Agatha Bell is probably the most memorable song on the album I, I just I love that one but yes uh, plenty of good songs just uh, not as quite as memorable. They just don't stick in my brain as uh, uh, as much as they his uh, previous albums used to. So, uh, but still a very worthwhile artist to check out if you like that singer songwriter kind of uh, uh, style, and if you like uh, distinctive voices and kind of slightly weathered voices. Uh, Colin Hay is not to be missed. Now number six on my list is. An example of, and I want to do a video on this subject at some point, um, artists that uh, whose debut albums kind of shrank on me, and so I ended up uh, getting rid of them, and then I hear a year or two later that their sophomore album's coming out, I decide, what the heck, I check out a couple tracks and end up really liking them, and like this album so much that I realize I was stupid to abandon the, the artist and go and rebuy their debut album. But yes, that is the case with... Sigrid, a Norwegian uh, singer-songwriter, a uh, female vocalist here, uh, with her sophomore album, How to Let Go. This is uh, excellent stuff, uh, maybe even a little bit better than her debut. Uh, still not sure about that. I'd have to really, really listen to and examine both of her albums side by side. But uh, yes, she's still got a lot of the 80s influences that uh, make her a bit of a draw for me. And that same unique voice, uh, she's got a great voice on her. As uh, yeah, a couple of the songs on here. Mirror is a really, really great song. That's a song about uh, self-image and how you know, uh, relating how others perceive you to how you perceive yourself. Great message in that in that song. Uh, the song "A Driver Saved My Life" is another great one, and the title is a little bit reminiscent of an Elton John song, "Someone Saved My Life Tonight," but uh, they're pretty different, very different songs. And uh, 
a great ballad on here is Mistake Like You. Fantastic song as well. So, yes, I would highly recommend checking out Sigrid's album, sophomore album, How to Let Go, as well as her debut album, Sucker Punch, if you missed that one. Uh, great, great artist here. So, yeah, that was uh, number six on my list. And now coming into the top half of my countdown, uh, number five is another artist, kind of like Colin Hay, uh, that I'm kind of surprised he's so low on the list. Uh, I love this guy, and I'm, I eagerly, eagerly await his albums when they come out, but for some reason they always tend to be lower in my year-end list than I thought they would be. And he's here he is lower in my mid-year list than I thought he was going to be, but don't let that uh, make you think that's any uh, detriment or commentary against how great the artist is. We're talking about Keb Mo, uh, amazing uh, upbeat blues guy. I kind of think of him think of him as an upbeat blues artist because that's how a lot of his songs are. Is uh, if not in terms of the music, at least in terms of the lyrics, he's much more optimistic than a lot of blues artists. But yes, this is his 14th solo studio album, Good To Be, and it is just excellent. Uh, the Medicine Man, which is a song uh, featuring Old Crow Medicine Show, uh, that was, I believe, the first single, and that one came out like two years ago, and that really caught my ear, and it was it's basically a, a song about uh, COVID, and uh, it was written while we were still waiting for the vaccine, so that's the, 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 mess the uh, frame of mind that the song was written, the context that's the word that the song was written under. And a couple other great uh, tracks on here. Good Strong Woman. Uh, that's another excellent one. And uh, uh, Darius Rucker is featured on that song. And we also have Louder, which is a, a bit of a uh, social uh, social commentary song, which is excellent. Uh, the title track, which opens the album. And uh, as well as he does a great cover of the classic song Lean On Me, the Bill Withers uh, soul song. And that's just fantastic. He doesn't necessarily bring anything new to the song, but uh, with his voice, and, and again, here's a guy with a great distinctive voice uh, that uh, you just can't go wrong with, honestly. Uh, so yes, uh, it's it's shrunk maybe just a little bit on it, or maybe it's just because there are so many other good albums that came out. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's unfortunately not any higher than number five, but uh, Good To Be by Keb Mo uh, is a not-to-be-missed album. Excellent, excellent stuff. And now coming in at number four on my countdown is another artist who originated in the 80s, kind of like Colin Hay did with Men at Work. Uh, this is Tears for Fears with their latest album, The Tipping Point. And this is their seventh album and their first in 17 years. And uh, I almost let this album go by. Uh, I've never been a huge Tears for Fears fan, but uh, one thing that kind of swayed my interest and convinced me to pick it up was the fact that, and I think I mentioned this in a video before, uh, it was either a playlist video or something else, that I was able to track down their first two albums, The Hurting and Songs from the Big Chair, in their two-disc deluxe CD versions, which I had kind of been had on my list for a long time. But uh, I had never really followed the band after those, the, after the singles from those two albums. So I, as I said, I almost let this one go by, but something told me I should pick it up and give it a listen. And boy, was I glad I did. And <clears throat> I'm going to tell you guys something about this, uh, what this album reminds me of. That's, it might sound like sacrilege or something to you guys, but let me explain. Tears for Fears on this album reminds me of a boy band. Let me finish. Uh, there was a, they started out as a boy band, at least, a group called Take That. Uh, they started out in the 90s. They were a British band. They were the, the band that uh, Robbie Williams got his start in. He's a uh, very successful solo artist now. They made a few albums. They disbanded at the end of the 90s, and they came back, what was it, almost 10 years later, uh, minus Robbie Williams, who was still on a solo career. And when they came, did their comeback album, uh, Beautiful World or Wonderful World, I can't remember what the name of it is, uh, they had adopted a more adult contemporary pop sound. And it's that sound that uh, Tears for Fears reminds, uh, reminds me of uh, on this album. And I actually did not, that didn't occur to me until the third or fourth listen of this album. So uh, yeah, maybe a weird kind of a connection to make, but uh, trust me, it is meant as nothing but a compliment. Because uh, take that, their output since their breakup has, in my opinion, been leaps and bounds above the stuff that uh, made them famous to the teenage market back in the 90s. But uh, yes, some absolutely amazing songs on this album. The title track is excellent. Uh, My Demons is another great, great song. 
as well as Rivers of Mercy and Break the Man. Some great stuff on here. And that's just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg. I've actually got the uh, the Target uh, edition that's got two bonus tracks on it. Uh, but yes, even without those two... Actually, well, if you can find the Target edition, those two bonus tracks are worth are worth it on this album. Um, uh, Let, it all e Let It All Evolve is one of the two bonus tracks, and that is fantastic as well. Uh, but yes, an, a standout album, and you know, despite the fact that uh, they reminded me of a boy band, they still they still in a way sound like Tears for Fears, but uh, at a different stage. Which I mean, you know, think about it—they are not the guys that they were in the '80s. You know, they're 40 years older, so uh, it would stand to reason that they've shifted their sound a bit, and um, and evolved in a way. So yes, excellent album. Uh, whether or not you like Tears for Fears back in the day. I would recommend checking out The Tipping Point. Now, number three on my list. Um, now, given the fact that I do not like uh, straight-ahead country music very much, uh, although it is starting to grow on me, uh, that would uh, make a bit of a surprise, make it really weird that this album is so high up on my list. And, uh, you know, this is and this is good old country, as I said. This is not the, the pop-inflected country that you hear all the time that uh, makes all the charts and stuff and uh, all that. This this is straight ahead, good old fashioned country music, and but this guy is just so good at it. And I will admit that the fact that I am personally acquainted with this artist might have something to do with its position on the list. But honestly, I just plain enjoyed the songs. And this or this list, as I should have mentioned at the beginning, it's not about the uh, artistic merit or how profound the songs might be or how original they might be. It's how much I enjoy the albums. And, you know, you don't have to be, you know, have a particularly profound message that nobody has ever said before to make good music. And this guy proves it. His name is Jack Settle. And this is his uh, his debut full-length album, Hickory Avenue. And yes, uh, Jack, by the way, was uh, one of the fellow groomsmen uh, that um, alongside me at the wedding of my good friend Noah back in March. So, and uh, I, I rode in. I rode with uh, Jack a couple of times uh, between hither and yon, going places. And uh, the whole time we were riding together, we talked music, of course. Uh, but he is, of course, uh, he talks from mostly from the musician side. Although he did talk a lot about from being from the fan side as well. Whereas you know, I'm just a music fan. So, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of fun conversation. Nice guy, and he actually. Uh, Gave me a ride back to my hotel after the wedding to save me the cost of an Uber fare. Love you, Jack. Uh, so, yes, this guy is just excellent. And I, I like pretty much every one of the songs on here. It's just wonderful. Uh, the, the opening song, Interstaten, is a great, great upbeat song. Possibly the best opening track of any album I've heard this year. It's just upbeat and just kicks the album off right from the go-getter. And... Uh, Settle Down Jack, that's a great song that kind of uh, is a play on words on his name. And just the sound of that song, it's kind of a... I don't know if you'd necessarily call it a ballad, but it's kind of got a, a foreboding. It's, it's got a bit of a dark sound to it, uh, even though it's it's somewhat humorous, and it's it's got a, a dark sense of humor to it. Uh, and then, let's see, Like a Rattlesnake is one of my favorite songs on here. It's got a great message about, um, you know, all of us trying to get along, and it's, uh, I believe that's the song where it's just Jack and his guitar. No percussion, no nothing. And that's just fantastic. And uh, J.W. and Topaz is a great storytelling song. And that's one of the things I've come to appreciate with country music is its capacity for storytelling. Probably the best storytelling genre out there. Oh, the title track, Hickory Avenue, which closes out the album. Uh, he wrote that about his sister. And so in that respect, I can't really help but think about my own sister when I listen to it, uh, although you know my sister is no longer on the earth, on this earth, and she was older than my, than me, whereas you know Jack's sister is younger than him, and she is still very much alive. So you know, very different. Uh, looking at it from a different angle, but still, it's a song about his sister, so I, I can kind of feel it. So, as you can tell, there's a good reason why this is number three on my list. It's just an excellent album, and I will be following Jack hopefully. Um, Building on our friendship that we... I, I think we got off to a good start on our friendship uh, in those very quick few days that I uh, got to know him uh, back in March and uh, with at, at Noah's wedding. So, uh, yes, uh, you've put out a heck of an album, Jack, and I cannot wait for your next one. So, anyway, 
My runner-up for uh, album of the mid-year so far is it's actually another country album, and although this one, uh, it, it is kind of like it's it, it straddles genre lines. It's not completely country, but uh, well, I'm going to tell you what it is first of all. Bronco by Orville Peck, and uh, yes, this was a dual uh, LP, and it's actually as of the making of this video, I don't believe it's out on CD yet. It's only been re been released digitally and on LP, but yes, this is. There's something about Orville Peck that uh, he creates such an atmosphere with the songs on an album. I mean, this has got to be by far the most atmospheric any album has been. I mean, it, it's in that way, it's more than the sum of its parts. It's got some great songs on it, but just the experience of listening to the album, the, the atmosphere, the mood that it puts you into, it, it's just kind of, you can kind of feel the album all around you. Uh, and his voice, of course, is just unbelievable. It's kind of like a, a mix of Johnny Cash and Roy Orbison and Elvis. I mean, it's just it's off the charts. His voice is just off the charts. Uh, the Curse of the Blackened Eye and Trample Out the Days are probably my two favorite songs on here. Uh, Lafayette and Come On Baby Cry are another couple of standouts on this one. But yes, this one is it's like 14 tracks. So it's a nice long album. It's another artist who does not skimp on the running time. But uh, yes, wonderful, excellent album. And uh, it's almost definitely going to be well within my top 10 at year's end. And I honestly cannot uh, wait to see what he does next. And don't you love the cover? I mean, just... It's, it's kind of... It is kind of like... Uh, kind of conveys the atmosphere of the album in a way. A little bit dark, but... Uh, yeah, I just, <clears throat> it's hard to describe listening to um, uh, Orville Peck's music. It's just, as I said, it just drops you into an atmosphere in a way. And uh, it's almost like I feel the room around me has just completely changed, even though nothing has, obviously, when I'm listening to his album. So anyway, we are down to the number one. My number one favorite album for the first half of 2022 is... Loss, Hope, Love by The Feeling. Now, this is a band that I, I fo started following them when they put their first album out, 12 Stops and Home, back in 2006, I believe it was. And uh, their first three albums were outstanding. Uh, the, but that's where I lost them, lost them a little bit. Uh, I listened to their fourth album and did not think much of it. And as, as a result, I just completely bypassed their fifth album. But then when I heard early on, early on in the year that they were putting out a new album, I checked out these singles and rather liked them, and I decided to go ahead and pick up the album, give them another chance, and honestly, I think this is their best album since their debut. It's it's that good, and this actually made me, uh, shortly after I listened to and got into this album, went onto eBay and somebody was selling <clears throat> their second, third, fourth, and fifth CDs, all still sealed, in a single eBay lot, and so I jumped on that and bought it, and... Now I have been re-familiarizing myself with their fourth and fifth albums that I, uh, uh, fourth I didn't like and the fifth I completely skipped over. Uh, so yeah, I am back, firmly back into the feeling camp uh, with this album. It's just fantastic stuff. Um, uh, the, the song There's a Word for It, which in a way uh, serves as the title track uh, in terms of how the lyrics are, are structured. That is my favorite song on the album by far. Uh, the song On the Edge is a terrific anthem for outcasts. Uh, they had another song... Oh, shoot, what was it? I think it was on their first album as well. Uh, but that was also... Um, oh, Strange was the name of that song. And that was also kind of a... That was a bit more of a ballad for outcasts. So, uh, you know, On the Edge is kind of a sequel song in a way to that. And it's fantastic. And then the song There Is No Music, which was their first single off this album, I believe. And of course, you know, the the title of the song should tell you why I enjoy it. And then the song, the uh, song, the song "Love People" is another outstanding track on this album. So, yes, uh, I can't say enough good things about this album, and well, pretty much all the albums uh, on this list. But uh, yes, check them out if you have not yet. I highly recommend all eleven of these albums. And yes, as I mentioned, uh, it's going to be interesting how uh, if any of these albums change positions. And how they how they jockey for the uh, the final year end countdown when it comes in December. So uh, yes, as an, and as I mentioned, uh, four albums I've already bought uh, for July 
that uh, are going to be, one of them is definitely going to be a contender. Uh, so yes, the year has been looking quite well, and we've still got uh, five months left, about five months left in the year to, to see what other uh, stuff comes out. Uh, Megan Trainer is coming out with a new album, uh, and so is, who else? I just heard of somebody else. Oh, um, uh, Charlie Puth. Finally, Charlie Puth is coming out with a new album, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully he is anyway. Uh, who knows with him? But anyway, yes, uh, great, great music this year. Plenty of good stuff and plenty of stuff to come, hopefully. So, yes, that is it for my mid-year countdown for 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, a share, a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And go check out my past videos. Uh, and give a check out to all of the... Uh, people in my description down below the links uh, to my fellow youtubers they are just they can't you can't miss them they're all just great youtubers and uh, yes so I guess that's it for now uh, thanks so much for watching again and uh, don't forget life's too short to be a music snob